today's video, we're going to be exploring how to extrude, sweep, and subtract objects in 3D. Here we got a two inch clevis pipe hanger. I thought I'd recreate this in 3D. So here we are in our 2D workspace and I'll be creating this shape first in uh, 2D and then we'll be rotating it up in 3D and then doing the extrusion and the sweeping. So let's start out with just two simple rectangles with the REC command. And I'm going to give it a 2.75 inch width and a 4.5 or four and a half inch height. And we're going to do a zoom and we're going to zoom down into that shape there. I'm going to go ahead and copy this over with the CO command. So we'll have two of them. This left side is going to be the outer piece and the right side is going to be this rounded inner piece. So first we're going to chamfer the corners here on this rectangle. So that's the CHA command for chamfer. And I need to find my distances. So I use select D for distance. And then I type in 0.75 and 0.75 on the other side. So we'll select this side here. Repeat the command with the enter key. We'll choose that side. This is the outer piece of metal and this is the inner. So we'll come down here. We're going to use the fillet command. That's F for fillet. We need to define the radius on this one with the R command. Our radius is going to be one inch. And repeat the command just like we did before. Now let's just draw a line with the M2P command, because I want this to be the midpoint between this and this. And I want my line to be exactly in the middle. Let's just extend this over here. Now I want to explode both of these polylines. So I select them by crossing, type in X for explode. The part has this overlap. So the top overlaps the bottom. So let's just take this side here and we're going to stretch it from the midpoint and then bring it down about 0.5 inches. And on this one, it's kind of the opposite. So we're going to be stretching this and then coming up and referencing this up 0.5 inches there. By referencing, I'm actually referring to snap tracking. So make sure that both of these are turned on. I have a video about that if you're wanting to learn how to use snap tracking. But essentially, this is overlapping 0.5 and this is overlapping 0.5 this way. So let's just go ahead and get rid of these end pieces here. And what we're going to do is join all these sides so that they become polylines again. So we'll just type in the J command. We're going to do the same for this one and join these as well so that they're all together. So this way we can offset them more easily. Now I'm going to just move this over this way. So just to create this part, I'm going to take this and reference it over 0.25 inches. Reference this side over as well. Let's just make them even 0.25. I'm also going to draw a construction line this way, which I'm going to use later to define a hole. Not sure if you see that in the, yes, there's a hole right here. So now that we have our shape created and our polylines intact here, I'm going to go ahead and use that 3D rotate command. Now refer to that previous video that I just made. So I'll leave that in the link below. I'm going to go into my 3D view and then I'm going to select this shape here and then I'm going to type in the ROT and select rotate 3D. My axis is going to be at the bottom. Remember, this is where the hinge is. 
so that we can flip it. So I'm defining my two points here. And then I'm just simply going over this way to rotate that up. So straight over to the left, make sure that you have your F8 key pressed and you're locked into ortho mode. Now I'm gonna pan over just by using my score wheel on my mouse. Then I'm gonna go into my front view and I'm gonna offset this top piece to the outside and the bottom piece to the inside. So I'm going to offset it a sixteenth of an inch. Type in O for offset. And it's 0 0.0625. Enter. And then I'll offset this polyline this way. And I'm going to offset this one to the inside. Keep in mind, the offset command is only going to work on that front view top view or so forth, it's not going to work in the southwest view or the southeast view. So let's just stretch this up a bit here to 0.5. Let's go into the southwest isometric view again. And here I'm just going to create a couple of pieces. And these pieces are going to define the thickness of this metal and then the depth here, which will be half inch. Let's change our UCS. So right now the Z axis needs to point up. So let's do the UCS world. That's UCS and then W for world. And then let's create our rectangle. Type in REC for rectangle again. And the X direction, the one that's highlighted now, is going to be the thickness of the metal. So we're going to go with a 0.125 and then the width is going to be 0.5. I'm going to go ahead and copy this over. So we have one that we'll use for the top side of this part, one for the bottom side. So we're going to be sweeping this shape around following this polyline. So in order to do that, we just type in SW for sweep. I'm going to select this object here to sweep, enter, and then the path is going to be this polyline here, the one that we offset. And just to let you know, we offset it at a 16th of an inch or half the thickness of the metal, because when you do a sweep command, it's going to sweep it from the center line. So we'll select this and that creates our top piece. We'll press enter to repeat the command. We select the object, enter, and then the inside of the polyline here. So now if we do a orbit around this model, we have this drawn like so. Let's go ahead and shade it. So we, we have these construction lines here that we can use to create more extrusions. So if we zoom down and we go to the end point of this construction line here, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a circle. Let's see for circle. We're on the world coordinate system. For a radius, I'm just gonna use 0.125, which is gonna give us a hole that is quarter of an inch. And for the height, I'm going in a downwards direction. Now, when you're modeling in the world coordinate system, when you go down, you're going in a negative distance and you go up, it's positive. So let's go down a negative 0.75. So that's going to push that directly through the metal there. Now let's create the bolt going across. So remember the UCS command and then using the three point option, picking the X direction here and then the Y here, type in the C command. That's gonna allow us to draw that circle so that it matches this plane here. And we'll find the end point here. Let's just type in END to override the snaps. And that will allow us to snap to the end point of that line. And for our radius, Let's type in 0.125 again. 
And now let's sweep this circle across using this path here. So remember it's the SW command, select the circle, enter, then select the path. Now that we have these objects penetrating the model, we can go ahead and type in SU for subtract. The entities that we want to subtract from are these two pieces here, enter. And then the entities to subtract would be this one and this one, enter. So that completes this lesson. Let's go ahead and just do a quick view of the model here to see what we created. So in this lesson, we drew the shape of our part using a polyline command. Then we came back and we offset that distance by half the actual distance of the metal. And by doing so, we were able to create a shape and then use the sweep command to extrude that shape around the polyline. And then lastly, I showed you how to extrude an object. We extruded the top hole on the part, and then we created another extrusion using the sweep command and extruding that all the way across the part. And then lastly, we subtracted those pieces from the model, thereby creating those holes that we needed for the bolts. I hope this video is helpful. Please let me know what you think, and we'll see you in the next video.